and it also has an impact on us. Um, and that's the only truth, really. Everything is always changing. Um, but what connections might you make either with the subheading or with the quote, if any? It's acting weird. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I've had, I can think of two recent examples of moments where my words affected somebody that, um, in a positive way, thankfully, mm -hmm. <laughs> it can go the other way too. Mm -hmm. But that I didn't feel like I was saying anything that impactful and mm -hmm. yet based on their reaction I realized that it was like one was a fifth grade boy at Bowen Elementary and you mm -hmm. know that um, population there is a lot of high poverty at that mm -hmm. building and um, a lot of the English language learners and I was listening in on a couple boys working on a math problem and one was doing better than the other and when the boy was struggling the other boy was um, really patient with him mm -hmm. and like posed a question to kind of help him and didn't just say an answer mm -hmm. and I just noticed all of this patience and then when um, he did the boy did well he like was encouraging him and mm -hmm. um, I just said to him after I said well I noticed how patient you were and how encouraging you were I said those are things teachers do mm -hmm. and later on in the hour I heard him saying to somebody else he pointed at me he goes she thinks I can be a teacher uh -huh. and he sounded like really proud about it mm -hmm. and I thought oh that's maybe a little mm -hmm. like a vision of mm -hmm. himself that exactly. he's never had before exactly so yeah like, wow, I'm glad I said that. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love that story because I think it sets up well social justice in terms of the intention of how do we allow kids to bring their full selves to our classrooms and utilize math to solve the problems of the world um, or their lived realities. Um, that is the essence of it. And so... It's Murphy's Law, ladies. Murphy's Law. Sure. So um, last time you were here, I handed out a document that looks something like the documents, the pictures on the tile. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to like, yeah, and you don't have to go through the full packet right now, but it's going to be an intimate group. And so I think it's going to allow us to go deeper into it. Um, but your national organizations, and when I say you are, I mean there are mathematical-centered national organizations that are pushing and calling for mathematicians, um, teachers, to look more at social justice or how we change up our math practices to not only embody um, more students, humanize the field, but also really incorporate um, social justice. Um, and it goes to the math scores like we were talking about again, how we open up the door to create more possibilities, but then also, again, how we just use it as a tool. And so one of the things that I'm going to invite you to do right now is you can take a post-it or a scrap sheet of paper. And I want you to just write down four things that make you uniquely you. Four things that make you uniquely you. And you're talking about like the identity things, mm -hmm. kind of? Okay. Mm -hmm. So on mine, I might write mom or sister or um, educator, you know, or things that make you uniquely. Okay. Yeah. Does that help, Ginger? I, I think. Yeah. If that's. Is that what you're talking to? Some of those? Yeah. Identity? You got it. Things? You okay. got it. Got it. It's hard to think about, especially given how busy our worlds are, and sometimes we're not put in situations where we have to think about it, and that time sometimes can be a gift yeah. or it can be a curse. But what I want you to do is look at your list, and then I want you to cross off one or two of the items that you just worked so hard to actually <laughs> generate. I see where you're going with yeah. this. Oh, my gosh. And, Ginger, did we talk about this last time a little bit in terms of crossing off the identity? I don't know if we did or not. I'm trying yeah. to remember. Okay. 
well, it's okay. But I've I had some like. See, I, I'm in part of leading educators also, oh. and so I've had some equity stuff. So you're, that. you don't so know, it's all it's blurred. It's all kind of blurred together yeah. in between yeah. here and gotcha. now and then, but that's okay. Yeah. It's all good learning. Yeah. Okay. So. It's, hopefully it'll just reinforce the yes. other. So um, you've crossed off one, right? Mm-hmm. How did you choose which one? Maybe it was just the one that was on the top I of the list. I thought I had crossed off two. Um, that's, that's fine, because eventually you will have to. <laughs> right. I... I crossed off woman because um, I don't feel like there's anything necessarily, what am I trying to say? If I didn't have that identity, I don't feel like it would affect much. Mm. Like I don't feel like it gets in Mm -hmm. the way of anything Mm -hmm. and I don't feel like it promotes anything Mm -hmm. so I feel like it's maybe the least Mm -hmm. valuable (laughs) Mm -hmm. on the list that you currently have that I currently have would you because I'm thinking of crossing it off I feel like what if I had to lose one of yeah yeah and this one felt the least important yeah yeah um if you don't mind us asking which one did you leave then because you have three, right? So which ones did you leave? Okay, which one did you leave? And I know the very last one I would leave is mm-hmm. I am a beloved daughter of our Father mm-hmm. in Heaven, and I'm not going to let go of that. Mm-hmm. That's the one mm-hmm. you can't make me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. See that fast, though? Yeah. And so the whole point is um, keeping people still long enough for, they are, for, for them to think about their identities, be explicit and write it down, ask them to cross it off. That process is usually difficult, and some people get upset. Um, and then eventually cross off another one, and you get a little more frustrated. You mm-hmm. say what you just said, mm-hmm. and usually kids don't say it like that. They don't emote like that. They mm-hmm. do it in a different way. Mm-hmm. The point is that we ask kids to do it all the time in schools. So in particular, in the math field, um, math is known to be very, and please push back, objective, neutral. Um, sometimes you don't talk about life. Um, you talk about the equations, the numbers, etc. And in some ways, that's making kids feel like they have to leave or check some of their identities or their real world at the door. And so some of what we're going to talk about is um, how do we engage in that, making people cross off their identities? How might we invite them to invite in their uh, background knowledge, their real world, into the space to humanize it and to make it more relevant? That's the premise behind Mm -hmm. that activity. Mm -hmm. Um, And it goes to this quote right here in terms of the more culturally competent we are, the less kids feel pressured to leave behind pieces of them or to change pieces of them. I'll let you read the quote. Um, I don't know. Sally was trying to get that working, but it's not. So we're going to keep talking. You can do what you want to do with that. So, I think I, I feel like I have a partial understanding of what you mean mm-hmm. about them bringing them full selves mm-hmm. or them feeling like they have to leave mm-hmm. pieces of themselves, parts of themselves. Almost like a piece of themselves isn't welcome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, besides, so on one hand, it sounds like doing, um, we always talk about doing word problems or real mm-hmm. world problems. Mm-hmm. Um, to think of it as doing their world mm-hmm. problems, mm-hmm. like things that are relevant yes, to them. exactly. But I feel like that's only the surface, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering if there's something else mm-hmm. I unconsciously do mm-hmm. that makes kids feel mm-hmm. like they have to hide a part of mm-hmm. themselves. Sure. So are there more examples? Sure, and I think one of the things that we should do is um, definitely zoom in in terms of our classroom and then also zoom out in terms of, in general, what happens in the Systemic schools things. and what other things might we see. Mm-hmm. Um, but whether it is um, folks not being able to use their native language in the classroom. Mm-hmm. So there are uh, times where kids are told not to speak Spanish in classrooms. There are times where, well, um, we hold up different examples that are not relevant to our kids. So there was a story about a woman trying to use a culturally responsive uh, story problem, but it was all about pumpkins at Thanksgiving, and she was working with kids of color, and it was about pumpkin pie. And And the question had something to do with how much pumpkin pie would you eat? 
and and the kids kept saying, no, we don't do that, and blah, blah, blah. And she continued, and she was trying to be sensitive to everybody eats pumpkin pie. And eventually, an adult came by, and she consulted, and they were like, they eat sweet potato pie. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do kids see their culture in the mm-hmm. classroom, mm-hmm. Um, whether it's an example of a story problem that's more relevant, right. something like that? Um, other so ways something simple, like, hey, we're going to do a pie problem. What kind of pie do you like to eat? And then insert that favorite yeah. pie into the Sure. Problem. I mean, something as basic as that. The other thing that might be more complex, who are the cognitive models that they see represented in terms of math theories and theorists? Um, is it reflective of um, the environment that's in the room, the kids that are in the room, mm-hmm. or just of one particular culture? Mm-hmm. And then what research might we need to do to broaden it? Mm-hmm. Push back or say something. Are you tracking with no, me? No, I yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like somebody put together a website that said not all mathematicians are nerdy white guys or something, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it had a list of mm-hmm. a whole bunch of mm-hmm. other mathematicians, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. unfortunately, just even saying mm-hmm. nerdy white guys in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, maybe that isn't super culturally sure. sensitive, but sure. the list yes. might have some yes good examples yeah. in it. Yeah, so those are some of the, like, beginning conversations and um, beginning awareness um, that I think can continue to go deeper in terms of examples, in terms of how we invite in other cultures. Even if it is some of the artifacts that we have in the room, is it inclusive, male, female, and of uh, various cultures, and sometimes it's even if there are key um, reference documents um, might we have some in Spanish if that's the next top language spoken? Things like that. Um, so that's what this particular title is talking about in terms of things that we give up. And we talked a little bit last time about there may be some discomfort um, lean in instead of uh, checking out. And that's what this title is about too in terms of asking what the discomfort might bring. And you've seen the success indicators before. Here's the inclusion activity. And the reason why we engage in inclusion activities is you've had a full day. You're probably thinking about your emails that you've received while out of the office or how the kids are doing back in your classroom or at home and processing all of the information of the day. But the inclusion activity is meant to usher you into this space to think about the work that we're going to do together and to be something relevant, more than an icebreaker. And so the questions are, how do you know when something is unfair, fair or unfair, and then how might we allow students to connect injustices to math? Hey there. Hi, I'm so sorry. That's okay, <laughs> come on in, <laughs> you are we fine. Had a little incident, so. Oh, are you okay? Oh, I'm, I'm just fine. Okay, <laughs> okay, well we're glad to have you. Thanks. So, um, Jay, Yes. Michelle, Hi. Hi, Michelle. Gender, Brandy. Yes. Yes. And here's this, awesome. um, but you don't have to do anything with it right now. <laughs> it's the perfect time for you to come in, actually. We are wrestling with this inclusion activity, uh, which manifests as questions. How do you know when something is fair or unfair? And then secondly, how might we allow students to connect injustices to mathematics? So I'll let everybody think for a second, and then let's just share a little bit. And if and if it's mm, and if you want to start with something else, how might your kids let you know when something is fair or unfair? Whether it's biological kids or the kids in your learning spaces, mm-hmm. you can speak from your perspective, from your biological kids' perspective, and or from the kids in your learning spaces. How do you know when it's fair or unfair? Well, and some students will say like they think. For instance, I have students that are on special behavior plans, so they think it's unfair. Oh, I don't get breaks like so and so, and I don't get breaks like so and so, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's not what they need, it's what Mm -hmm. the other students need. So 
I always tell them that it's fair because that's what that person needs, but you don't need that right mm-hmm. now. You might need something else. Mm-hmm. So you're still addressing it, and you're bringing in this concept of equity. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Other folks? Well, I think usually when somebody feels like something's unfair, you hear a complaint. Mm-hmm. So that's like what your example mm-hmm. highlights. Like mm-hmm. There's going to be complaint, and there's going to be something that someone is getting that someone else isn't getting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and can't get TV. Like mm-hmm. if it's a game that's unfair, mm-hmm. it's because with a certain rule, you know, I can never win because of the way this rule is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're recognizing that um, there are some access points that some people don't have, mm-hmm. and there are some policies or systems things at play. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's when you know. And the complaint usually is written or verbal, but there's something to let you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. How about you, Jay? What do you think? I mean, I think I have, we have experiences, we have frameworks in our mind from our own knowledge and life that Mm -hmm. helps me think of what's fair and unfair, but I often don't know the feelings or experiences of others. Mm -hmm. Um, I try. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but and in, in, in I, you know, have tried to be aware of what others are thinking, but I often don't. I can't always know what's fair and unfair because mm-hmm. I don't know if all the. Mm-hmm experiences sure (laughs) sure there are some things that we don't know we only know what we know but you try to be empathetic as much as possible I anyone who has ever spoken to me about um, something not being fair or right have typically been very invested and there has been a lot of passion or emotion behind mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they like collect themselves to say, but you can almost feel the tremor mm-hmm. as they're expressing it. And so some of the inclusion activity, the point is how do we tap into that in terms of intersecting the injustice and in math? And how do we tap into it to the point where it helps math come alive and situate our kids in using math in their everyday world now as well as in the future? How do we help kids um, with that skill set of um, using agency? That's some of it. So that's the bridge to the next question in terms of how might we allow students to connect injustices to math? I don't know if I'm following your question, but I feel like it's reminding me about um, when you said you know, allow students to bring their full self. And I think we have, it becomes our job to recognize the value that everyone can bring into a lesson and be um, flexible enough to weave in whatever they have to offer Mm -hmm. to meet the ultimate goal we're trying to meet Mm -hmm. on any given day. Mm-hmm. I absolutely think it's that. Um, so I think you're definitely tracking with me in terms of my question. My question is, um, kids bring with them prior knowledge, live realities, um, and in some of our environments, perhaps more than others, there are injustices that they live with every day, and we don't have to turn a blind eye to mm-hmm. it. How do we help our classroom position them to use their agency to do something about it? Um, whether it is bringing in current events, whether it was like Flint water crisis, uh, whether it is, there's a lot of debate that kids love about the Nike Kaepernick campaign. How do you see math in that? There's some math in that. How do we ask them about what it is and bring it in and what else might that bring in with them? I think they care about that. Um, how do we ask them to analyze the hate you give, the movie that's out, that's really hot for kiddos? How do, you, how do we ask them to see the math in that? Or how do we ask them, what do you care about, and structure our math lessons about that, and use some of the skills that we teach in mathematics 
to not only go deeper into the content, but also help change what's happening around them. So say something about that. Go ahead. <laughs> but I think what I'm hearing you say now is that um, because they're experiencing injustice, um, that raises, you were talking about the tremor and the, the passion or energy they might have because of the injustice they're experiencing. You can harness that energy if you can connect something about that injustice to your math goal. Mm -hmm. So if there is a way to make a connection, mm -hmm. then you can add, they can use their energy and interest then mm -hmm. into reaching the math goal because it's embedded in mm -hmm. this injustice that they care about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and have you ever in your career heard a kid say, when am I ever gonna use that? Mm -hmm. like that content that you just spent an hour on or maybe a week like when am I ever going to use that and so the wondering is about how might there be a blend of what they're seeing outside of the brick and mortar of school in math class in particular because that's what we're talking about to connect to their real life mm -hmm. and it goes back to how some kids have to check what's happening to them outside of school at the door because they don't get to talk about it bring that inside to tap into their investment in it um, and help them critically analyze, which is a skill that we all say we want to build up in kids, that intersection. Yeah. Jay, what are you thinking? Huh. Um, Jay's thinking like, I was late and I'm so stuck <laughs> on why I was late and <laughs> we can move, we can come back to you because I know you just I have lots there. of thoughts, so but okay. I, let's keep going. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, Ginger, any connections for you? I'm just trying to, um, like, you know, with young kids, they're great and I know that there's things that we can do, but mm -hmm. some of that making those connections even through, because I don't just teach math. So, mm -hmm. you know, using books and things like that, I've even tried to bring things up in class and like their discussion is real. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like they don't look at it that deep yet. Mm -hmm. So it, it's how do you do that mm -hmm. and still value. Mm -hmm. And I guess the one thing I do is I get to know my students because I have them for two years. So I do value them as people, mm -hmm. where they come from. I know their families mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. It's like, how do I do more, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, and I think it varies by grade level. I know, well, I won't get ahead of myself. In the next couple of tiles, um, I think it'll speak to you, too, in terms okay. of what it sounds like looks like. But feel, fr feel free to c keep asking questions or to push back. And so, Jay, before you came in, we were talking about this notion of gatekeepers to gateway and creating possibilities instead of how we keep kids out of some of our um, higher end math courses. Um, but this is a question that I think most kids, whether they're young or old, might get. So tell your students, so I'm going to take four slices of this pizza. You have a whole pizza there. I'm going to take four slices of this pizza because I'm older and everyone else gets one slice. Is that fair? And I think there are some math principles in that, right? Mm -hmm. Some standards in that. But it also gets at that essence of what's fair, what's not fair. What might your kids say to that question? Is that fair for slices? I think most kids, regardless of their age, would say, no, that's not fair that you're taking mm -hmm. it, right? Right. And then being able to ask, so what other things are happening that brings up that notion or that sense to you of fairness or injustices, depending on the age group? I just think a lot of them are going to be like, well, at soccer at race time, so-and-so doesn't play by the rules, and mm -hmm. then because mm -hmm. it's their ball, and so they say it's my ball, my rules. Mm -hmm. And so my wondering is, is where might that go in terms of, I'm going to pick something basic like percentages. Mm -hmm. So what, how much time do you end up using on the argument versus playing? Mm -hmm. Where are the math principles in that, talking about it like that, mm -hmm. um, but then going deeper in terms of, so 
as, as we continue to build on our skills, where else do you see it? And where's the math in it? I don't think you're going to talk about mass incarceration with third graders no. or whatnot, <laughs> but it could be leading to some vertical conversations for um, other folks mm -hmm. to start talking about that. Mm -hmm. It's the introduction of what's fair, what's not fair, and where the math principle's at. Because I think what you just said is your kids care about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so integrating small right. topics like that and then building upon larger ones. Mm -hmm. um, so how might students connect scenarios or current events to this? Let me go on. The point behind it in terms of the social justice piece is that um, given the times that we're in, we definitely want to build a math skill set. And how do we also build a skill set where kids are thriving and surviving and using the math skills to change the world if possible? And if that's using the math in it, that's what we want to encourage. I want to introduce this article because I think it's going to um, give some more background knowledge. And there's a document. You're not going to read all of those pages, but I wanted to give you the full article. And so let's focus in on this chart for a second, um, the one that says social justice math, and it has the three columns. And it says, what might it sound like? what might it look like, and what might it feel like. That is the chart that I'm going to invite you to kind of focus in on as we do get into this article right here. Because the hope is by the end of that article, um, the first one, that we'll have some information in each column that will help kind of operationalize this social justice mathematics piece and what I've been talking about in terms of injustice or fairness and not being fair. So I would invite you um, to skip over this top part, the our position paragraph, and get into the what is social justice in mathematics education. And it does go um, a couple of pages. And so maybe what we can do is actually jigsaw it. And so what I would encourage is, um, how about Ginger? Mm -hmm. Might you read the eliminating deficit views of mathematics learning? Okay. Do you see that on page? Yep. Uh, and then Michelle, where mm -hmm. it says eradicating mathematics as a gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take that? And then Jay, I'll take the social political one. And then um, I'm going to invite everybody to read the elevating the professional learning of mathematics. And the, the way that you would go about reading this is, um, as you're reading, if you see something that you can write down as what it might sound like, look like, or what it might feel like, then jot a little note on the paper, but also put a star or some kind of indicator in the margin so then you can draw our attention to that as you read through it. And then mm -hmm. we'll come back together and okay. process it. Okay. Cool. That's what it sounds like, looks like, and feels like. Um, so I'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds to think about, given what you read and what you wrote down for your individual section, as well as the one we all read together, what might be most beneficial for people to hear? What might be most beneficial for people to hear? And. I would love to just go and order the order of the article as we share out. So I'll pause and give you 30 seconds or so to think about what might be the most beneficial for the group to hear. And um, Ginger, did you have the first section? Yes. Yes. Would mm -hmm. you like to start? Sure. So um, it talked about eliminating deficit views of mathematics learning, and it talked about how um, almost right away we standardize test students, and so therefore students come in with labels um, on how well they can do mathematics. So 
Um, it might sound like less dehumanizing labels, low students, slow students, whatever. Um, focus on learning and not the standardized testing labels is what it might look like. And it would feel like or assume students bring knowledge and experiences that can be used for learning. Thank you. So I read the article also, so I'm going to add in a couple of different things. Um, and I think that it definitely um, talks about action towards or as it pertains to kids. But the, this section also talks about how um, owning an identity as a social justice mathematics educator also means challenging some of the beliefs and assumptions of the adults. And so specifically when you talked about standardized testing, I think mm -hmm. this goes back to what we were saying too, like what conversations might we need to have as math departments and schools about our use of one data point to determine which courses kids go into? Might there be other multiple intelligences or readiness um, screeners that help us know that there are um, other kids that probably could um, engage in this content? And maybe that means with a little more intervention, but how might we start some of those conversations? was one of the things that I took away from it. The other thing that I took away from it was um, that notion of ideas. Like I think they used the term maladaptive in that first segment mm -hmm. and or immature, not ready. <coughs> and so it, it reminded me of ASCDs. Um, ASCD is another major organization. We all know that, right? Like um, Association of Supervision Curriculum and Development, that one, mm -hmm. um, that talks about the power of yet. And so being able to talk about how kids continually mature, so not seeing it as a static, um, uh, fixed mindset, but they're still learning. Mm -hmm. And so as we have conversations and spaces throughout the school, how are we pushing back on um, conversations that are holding kids in that static place? not being immature, being maladaptive, et cetera. It also, to me, talked about um, opportunity gaps. So like in that top, so second page, first paragraph, it talks about slow kids, low kids, high kids, and bubble kids. And what it reminded me of is that there are opportunity gaps sometimes. And so not all kids come to school having the same experiences. And so the other invitation from this article is being a social justice mathematics educator means um, how are we looking at the whole preschool through K-12 system and saying where we see these gaps or these themes, how are we being intentional in placing interventions or scaffolds in place? So one school did this and what they did is in addition to summer school, like regular summer school, they created some STEM-based opportunities that were rigorous, that probably put some content in front of kids that the test would say they weren't ready for, but they put some other things in place to kind of prime them to have that exposure to it, which exposed them to, to higher content, more rigorous, that built some skill up. So it wasn't just about the remediation, but it interests the kids and built up skill that way. So that's what that first, um, that it reminded me of. Michelle, did you have number two, mm -hmm. the second one? Might you mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, it talked about math being a gatekeeper. And so when I look at this title of what social justice would look like, I mm -hmm. felt like I had to read this and mm -hmm. write down the opposite. Okay. Because this was describing what it currently looks like, mm -hmm. which is the injustice. Mm -hmm. So it was describing for example, algebra classes that are predominantly white or boys and missing more girls and more students of color and more um, of the low socioeconomic mm -hmm. status. So I said what it would look like, mm -hmm. we, I called it heterogeneous, but basically you could look mm -hmm. into um, any math classroom and see uh, snapshot of the world instead of mm -hmm. <laughs> just one particular mm -hmm. kind of student. Um, and in the same way, leadership, um, teachers, that, that would all be a mix of people instead of just one kind of people. Mm -hmm. um, it mentioned the need for having reflective leaders who that was towards the, in that last paragraph about how a reflective leader would have to be, oh no, wait, that's in the next, that's, oh, that's okay. That was in the next one. That's okay. Um, 
also the kind of mathematics that kids are working on that the kids that got labeled low in your section now get stuck doing um, mm -hmm. basic math facts mm -hmm. and they're not doing anything interesting or mm -hmm. high cognitive demand and then mm -hmm. they never get to they're mm -hmm. stuck there forever mm -hmm. so now they never have a chance to not be low yeah so what it would sound like is I think there'd be more discussions between all kids around interesting math problems that they can all, mm -hmm. um, that they all have an access point to enter. Mm -hmm. What Joe Bowler calls the mm -hmm. low ceiling, uh -huh. high mm -hmm. floor kind of, or no, low floor, high ceiling mm -hmm. kind of problem where everyone can enter and mm -hmm. almost like what you were describing with those mm -hmm. STEM, STEM mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. um, any of the math we do, mm -hmm. We can make accessible to everyone if we mm -hmm. put it in a context that they can have some intuition and bring mm -hmm. some experience to. Mm -hmm. And then we can label, and now I'm off of the article, but then we can label um, whatever the formal mathematics is, mm -hmm. label, label it to their, connect it to their experience instead of having it be abstract. Mm -hmm. So um, what it might feel like I just use the word capable. I think mm -hmm. um, kids, if if they were given these opportunities, every child could feel capable of doing math mm -hmm. instead of told that they're not capable. Mm -hmm. Thank you um, for saying that. And I think it just continues to go back to the conversation we were having when we first entered the room. Um, and I can't stress enough that the social justice lens of it also goes back to how and where we locate the problem. And so the label of maladaptive or low or slow situates the problem in the kid. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it holds the kid static. When we know that um, folks are forever evolving, it makes me wonder if when we look at the problem as being in the system and in the way that sometimes mathematics is delivered, and it may feel like I'm beating up on math. I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to amplify some of the research and some of the experiences and narratives that I have heard. I thought that section also talked about like how we um, abstract context, again, real life type stuff, and make, try to make math neutral, um, which sometimes is not the most engaging. So again, if the math was delivered in a different way, those kids that were called maladaptive or slow might they do something differently? Mm -hmm. Might they perform differently mm -hmm. based on the delivery of instruction? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's what we see with project-based learning, um, with some CTE, and I think with what they're trying to do with equity-based math and social justice math. Well, and in that sense, defining the problem well, I'm thinking back to what you said in this first section about, oh, maybe we shouldn't just have one measure, one data point, mm -hmm. but then let's take another step back. Why is there a decision to move anybody ahead mm -hmm. anyway? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we're hearing more and more mm -hmm. is there, we shouldn't mm -hmm. be tracking. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be moving anyone ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we have to take that further mm -hmm. step back. Mm -hmm. and question why we're even doing that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it reminds me that there are so many levels that need to be interrogated as we talk about social justice math. It's the individual agency, it's the systemic, um, organizational, and so there are problems at each one. We tend to focus on the problem at the individual level, the kid, mm -hmm. and we're missing the bigger picture. Um, the other thing it reminds me of, and I'm not going to talk about this, but I would love for you to just jot it down, and if ever you get free time to look at it, but Dr. Gloria Latson Billings, Latson Billings, she talks about the educational debt, educational debt, and basically I think in the first two paragraphs it's talked about, um, we talk about this achievement gap, like people are going to catch up, or like, not like they're going to catch up, but like they're going to ever get back to that high track that you're mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. But they're pigeonholed yeah. into this track. There becomes an educational debt in terms of that ceiling never allows them to get here. That does change the trajectory of some things in terms of <coughs> careers and even colleges because certain colleges want certain <coughs> high-level math, which does have implications on employment and other things. And so this conversation is about how do we redesign and open up um, and even help kids start to scrutinize 
um, what they're seeing day to day by using mathematical principles and math spaces. So we'll get into more um, in terms of what it sounds like looks like. Jay, what did you come up with with the third? Um, engaging the social, the social political? political turn of mathematics education. That first sentence, social justice commitment to mathematics education, highlights mathematics as a dynamic, political, historical, relational, and cultural subject. Hold on one second. Is that how you all experienced? Now, you all had a lot of math <laughs> classes because you're math teachers, right? Is that how you you all experienced it? More than normal. Dynamic. Dynamic. <laughs> Historical. Historical. Relational. Yes. Not political or cultural. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, and I teach first grade, so I'm. But yeah, we like had our you know introduction to elementary mathematics and like how to break things down and right. like, really get to the conceptual part of yep. things, mm -hmm. but. So to me, that's dynamic. Right. Conceptually understanding how to mm -hmm. add or subtract is mm -hmm. dynamic, but not political or historical. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have a math major, so. Mm -hmm. Some okay. of the things that jumped out were uh, math as a tool that can help an individual change the world, mm -hmm. transform the world into something new. Mm -hmm. um, math is real, so mm -hmm. we all could have a connection to math based mm -hmm. on our experiences mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I thought mm -hmm. in the concept of teaching first grade, I'm aware already, not only in math, but in other subjects, of what um, I was aware of a student who um, we were working in writing and they were supposed to bring in a collection of things. Mm -hmm. And apparently, Fewer kids are collecting things these days. I don't know if they're spending too much time on <laughs> video games or what, but collections are uh, maybe not happening so much anymore. Um, and then we get into like writing reviews about books or restaurants. or um, And I'm aware that some kids are not, um, they don't go out to eat. Um, and um, they um, couldn't tell the difference between McDonald's and Burger King. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> or um, we, not everybody has gone on vacation. Or, and so there's, mm -hmm. there's, um, there's things that I try to equalize in terms of their experience. Mm -hmm. um, not talk about going to, on vacation to Florida or, mm -hmm. um, and trying to, to normalize mm -hmm. the things that we're talking about. So maybe going to the grocery store, which may not be normal for some <laughs> even, mm -hmm. <laughs> but trying to reduce you know, a mm -hmm. story to relate to the real world mm -hmm. um, and, and, and trying to go deep into something that I'm hoping everybody can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, letting the kids go where they want to go, but also yeah. Um, not alienating them right out of the, you know, yeah. with what I'm talking about. Right, pigeonholing <laughs> right. basically right. what they have right. to, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or giving them a shared experience right. mm -hmm. instead right. of asking them to draw on right. Right. Mm -hmm. that um, they may or may not have had. Right, mm -hmm. right. And it, be, it was intensely, I was intensely aware of that last year when um, we had, I had a student who, um, we had ice cream um, sodas. Uh, it was with cherry soda and ice cream at our Valentine's party. Mm -hmm. And he, it appeared that he hadn't even ever had ice cream before. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and he right. was so excited. Yeah, you can't even have um, them share their favorite ice cream. Right, anymore. right. Mm -hmm. And not that it like blocks everything I do. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't want to be always walking Mm -hmm. on eggshells, on eggshells mm -hmm. but it made me aware of wow what if I said something mm -hmm. and that one student said wow I don't even I've never even had ice cream so mm -hmm. our, my favorite flavor is you know you've just alienated me mm -hmm. um, right because then they're like you don't know me and then they don't uh, care to know what you have to share with right them. right so I, I want to I want to be comfortable myself, yet aware mm -hmm. of what I of the power of what mm -hmm. I'm doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I um, mean, 
And to reduce it to ice cream, I mean, that's kind of first grade is what I'm... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it has to be age appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah it um, makes sense. That's where I've, I've run into issues with, you know, some things that may seem like, wow, everybody's had this experience. But, mm-hmm. um, well, and I think I do some of those similar things just because, like, there's a lot of parents who go, I wasn't good at math. So. Right, right. I mean, that's they sit down, that's the first thing. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, no wonder she's not doing very good at math. I mm-hmm. wasn't good at yeah. math. And yeah. so... It's like, wow, I'm not going to send homework home Mm. because, one, that parent doesn't feel capable, and then, two, then they start to spread that over Mm -hmm. to the student and say, well, you know, I wasn't good at math either, so... I've heard that already in first grade. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. and that student then is like, well, my mom wasn't good at math either, Mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's fascinating. I, I love how you're being real about, one, we have to recalibrate the conversation to make it age appropriate for the groups that we're working Mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And you are amplifying that there are um, multiple perspectives to think about. It's you as a teacher, it's talking to our kids, but also talking to our parents. Mm -hmm. And the article does go on to talk about mathematical identities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, as a social justice mathematician, I wonder what that means in terms of how we help kids intentionally reframe the messages that they're getting about their math ability and then also uh, be intentional and strategic as we're interacting with parents yeah. about um, and that's why we're trying things this way in yeah. our math class because I do believe your kids have the capacity and it's important that you're mm-hmm. speaking that into mm-hmm. them as well. It's interesting I mean I already hear messages from bet- differences between boys and girls mm-hmm. about what they can do and what they can't do mm-hmm. and it, in first grade I mean mm-hmm. it's 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 often a pretty open mm-hmm. grade level, <laughs> yeah. um, but you already hear messages mm-hmm. of what they people come in with their yeah. perceived notions yeah. mm-hmm. already. Yeah. So then they're already passing that right. down to their mm-hmm. children. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I mean, again, it just stems from that mathematical identity that the parents hold and that they're. Um, Uh, perpetuating Mm -hmm. Um, but again how do we interrupt that in terms of the conversations Mm -hmm. that we're having or even the communications home um, which I think is a slice of what they're saying in terms of being a social justice um, educator Um, the article goes on to talk about how there there has been some movement in terms of um, closing the gaps related to females to girls I don't know mm-hmm. if you all have seen that, but it does talk about there are mm-hmm. there's some evidence to that. Right. And so whereas something? well, whereas for the other special populations, yeah, there isn't. Yeah. And so my wondering for you all is what do you think has been different in terms of that? What's that phenomenon about in terms of if research is saying that there has been a change or a move of the needle related to girls? but not with other special populations, what have we done or not done yet that we need to amplify? Like what's happening with girls, even though it's not where we want it to be, but it's moving, what might we extract from that to use in the name of social justice mathematics? And I think one of the things, I'll just say mine, I think one of the things is we've called it out. Mm-hmm. We've said we give messages, uh, subtle and blatant, about where, what girls can and can't do, and we've told them to dumb down. What's your understanding about what has happened or not happened and what we might go to extract? Well, I think that's exactly it. It's the awareness. Mm-hmm. Become aware of. Mm-hmm. You know, So there was these huge differences between girls and boys in science and math. And we've become aware of them. And so therefore, just being aware has made us maybe approach it differently. Mm -hmm. And so it's that same thing with other groups. It's being aware that, um, you know, we still have to give them high level content. Don't dumb it down, those Mm -hmm. kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So how do we get them to the high level content versus Mm -hmm. bring the content down to where they are? no, I'm just I, my mind went all sorts of places with um, is is maybe gender identity or not identity, but um, what the, the equality of of gender um, somehow that's become it, it's okay to work on that. 
mm -hmm. and make that a more mm -hmm. equal playing field. Mm -hmm. But yet, a racial identity is is not okay yet. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, it was voices of just I've heard college students say we live in a post-racial world, mm -hmm. and it's like, I, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I haven't heard that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I haven't seen that myself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so what is that, that's not okay yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not okay yeah. to say, hey, we're going to equal these. We're going to mm -hmm. make this mm -hmm. field a fair field. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as soon as you equalize the field or make things equitable. People who were benefiting mm -hmm. from the inequity mm -hmm. no longer get to experience that benefit. And I think maybe with the gender inequities, maybe the benefiters do, mm -hmm. or do you say benefactors? I don't know. Um, we're, we're with you. <laughs> okay, made up a new word, roll with it. <laughs> Um, in that case, like maybe males haven't necessarily felt a cost in right. in right. women getting some of the same. Right. Like I don't, maybe they haven't really lost any position as women have gained. In many places, certainly in, not. Right. <laughs> right. Um, whereas I, I'm not a political person. Like I'm, I'm not. But you really make me think, Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yay. I, I think I go about my business a lot, and mm -hmm. I, I have, you know, not necessarily blinders on, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm always looking at the bigger social picture. Mm -hmm. And so I don't necessarily look at other people and think they have an agenda, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be suspicious of that agenda. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. walk around with that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like my eyes are opening up more to that, where... Um, think about public education versus mm -hmm. the private education. I feel like there are rich white people who don't want, they like being up at the top mm -hmm. and they don't want to, they want to stay there. Mm -hmm. And to let everybody have that same opportunity threatens mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. royalty, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the, the, pushback is yeah. so much stronger mm -hmm. in that case mm -hmm. compared to the mm -hmm. gender yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's ugly. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. It, I, and I, I don't, and, and you think of like, you said we've called it out, right? Yeah. So who's called it out? Some mm -hmm. strong women have called mm -hmm. it out. Yeah. Some strong women have stood mm -hmm. up and said, hey, mm -hmm. this is happening and this mm -hmm. isn't fair. Mm -hmm. But but when you look at some of the other groups, mm -hmm. if we're talking about poor people, yeah. you got a strong poor person who's mm -hmm. going to get, you know, right. where's their soapbox? Right. Mm -hmm. Where's their audience? Who right. do they talk to yeah. and who's going to listen to them? Mm -hmm. They don't have the advocate or the voice mm -hmm in that group. Mm -hmm. um, now that's not to say in other racial sure. groups or other sub um, sure. what were you, special Special populations you were calling them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe they have a strong voice, mm -hmm. but it just means, and I guess this is where I feel like mm -hmm. a, a social ember or a political mm -hmm. ember burning in mm -hmm. me a little bit, that um, we need to advocate mm -hmm. for those people mm -hmm. who are yeah. being Overlooked. Yeah. And it's complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is I complex. Mean, it, a voice and an advocate mm -hmm. doesn't always make it better immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think of like Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. or like look at the reaction to that. Mm -hmm. Like it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, uh, but we can make yeah. small changes. Like, right, right. Like I had, you know, I'm a K-5 math coach, right? And I had some first grade teachers who I'm trying to get them to do number talks. And they're doing them, and then it's three teachers yeah. in one building. They've got three sections. They're like, hey, we were thinking about splitting our number talks up and having the, you know, putting our classes together and splitting them up by mm -hmm. ability group. Ability group. Mm -hmm. 
And I was able to say, you know, actually the research says that's worse for kids. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, okay. And they were quite happy to hear that. And then mm -hmm. they ditched their idea. Mm -hmm. I said, maybe if you did it sometimes, like maybe mm -hmm. once every couple of weeks, just kind of mix some groups up for mm -hmm. a specific reason or not. But for mm -hmm. the most part, but so that was one little effect mm -hmm. a person can have mm -hmm. on yeah. just that little yeah. space. Yeah. It's, it's just funny, funny, ironic in terms of, um, I love that we are analyzing power and privilege. That's what we're talking about, mm -hmm. power and privilege. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in recognizing that some people are um, disenfranchised, they don't have the power. And so for the folks who are aware enough, how do we advocate? And what it looks like sometimes is being able to impact um, a student, a group of students, a grade level, but sometimes it engages fractal scaling that has that ripple effect and it does get to policy and structural mm -hmm. levels. It's You're slow. saying it's slow. <laughs> it is yeah. slow. Mm -hmm. I mean, but there's been years mm -hmm. to build this right. system that we're in and there are people in power that are um, maintaining it. So all of that, but the fractal scaling, the ripple effect that can take place and being able to save um, the kids that are in our yeah. sphere of influence as well as the teachers. Um, but also being able to talk about it in terms of the business case of it. Um, people don't like their wallets being hurt. And there are some implications for our county in terms of business aspects that will go wrong if we don't do things differently. Um, it reminded me of, in terms of girls, I think some of the things that we've done is we have been very intentional with going to girls and coaching them up and encouraging them. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we need to do, continue to do, mm -hmm. and, and position other people to do in terms of the other special populations, mm -hmm. that intentionality piece, whether it's uh, artifacts that represent um, those those populations in math type fields are doing the heavy lifting of the critical math or the harder math. Um, but I also want to go back to what you said about um, it's it's not only supposed to awaken us in our consciousness, but awaken the kids. So then there is, um, and, and the kids are living it so they know, but just being able to continue to help them use the content that they're being exposed to and engaging in throughout the day, how they use that to analyze the world. Mm -hmm. At what point would you say to a child, you know, data shows mm -hmm. you're not going to mm -hmm. have access to a high-level mm -hmm. math class, mm -hmm. but I know you're capable. Mm -hmm. At what age yeah. do you think that would yeah. be appropriate to say to say, oh, yeah. do you say that? Right. Is that what you mean, like, right. you know, involve them in it? Right. Like, have them right. realize right. So you're going to be up against it. Right. So um, one of the things that I put in the tiles is that um, we have to be smart about how we go about engaging social justice mathematics because there's a sensitivity to this as well as an urgency. So there's a tension or a tightrope that we have to navigate, which means that you have to know your parents. You have to know your principal and keep them in the loop in case something comes back. And then you also have to know your kids. And so there are some kids that I might say that to if they were older. And older could be older, let me say it like this, older depends on their maturity level. Mm -hmm. It's not an age, mm -hmm. it's their maturity level, mm -hmm. so you'll know. But I also think sometimes it's about asking questions or just listening to kids. What are you noticing about our school? Kids know that when they walk by certain classes that are AP or remedial, that sometimes you see certain groups in those classes more than others. What does that mean to you? Make that make sense mathematically. What numbers do you see in that? Tell me, explain to me what's happening socially. Blech, just say it. And then in terms of what, been, what we've been learning, where do you see the math at in that? So a certain percentage of kids, of all our kids, are in that class. So percentages, that's low level math. But I'm saying there's some math in that. Um, so I think it's more about the questions that we might pose. I don't know that I, might, I would say it directly to all kids, but I might ask questions. And then I also would listen because I remember being in the hallway or in the classroom and kids were talking about it. And so my question would be, how do we not make it a hush-hush conversation for the hallway, but bring that in here? And then sometimes it's cross-curricular social justice lessons. So whether that's tying the math with the English or the math with the social studies, it's all in there. 
Does that make sense or no? Michelle, does that answer does, some of what you were but saying? I guess I am still not sure mm -hmm. if that answers my question. Like, would you directly mm -hmm. tell, you know, mm -hmm. not tell a child one on one? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you're up against it right now, yeah. the way things are. Yeah. So, um, this, so primarily I have worked um, with middle schoolers, sixth through eighth grade, and then mm -hmm. I've worked with high schoolers. So, I, I have not worked a lot directly and concentrated um, chunks of time with younger babies but I can see fifth graders being a part of this mm -hmm. um, yeah. and so whether it is through um, seeing a pattern in terms of behavior and being able to say you know what um, I'm seeing a trend or a theme and there are so yes so there after building rapport I'm seeing a theme in your behavior and I know there's a larger pattern if you keep this up there are certain options and choices you won't be situated to participate in based on what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And so I know it feels like you're up against something because you are. Mm -hmm. So how do we work together to change it? What does that mean in terms of, yes, there's this thing out there that may be giving you resistance, but also there's some individual choices. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are times where I would say it, but that's only after building rapport um, and um, having conversations to make it okay, administration-wise and other, and being mindful of how I say it, if that mm -hmm. answers your question. Is that what you are getting at when you're saying involve them in the, the I don't know, it almost sounded like you were saying to involve them in the fight against the injustice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm saying that what they learn in school should be able to connect back to their life and so I believe there will come a time where each of us working with kids, I work with this group that I call, the, well, they call themselves, they name themselves Justice Warriors. And they're older kids, though. And I said, so what are, you say Justice Warriors, what's justice to you? What is injustice? Kind of like what you were saying earlier, for you to say what it looks like, you had to start with what it doesn't look like. So what's justice to you? What's an injustice? Which ones do you want to focus in on? And so what I can tell you, um, so I'm, I'm looking at this Venn diagram. Mm -hmm. So what I can, the side of the Venn diagram that I can talk to you about is the social justice aspect of it. And then it requires your listening and knowing your standards to then be able, be able to say, I see fractions in that, or I see this type of equation or this type of problem in that to make it come alive. And or I know that this ties to history and English or whatever. And so being able to incorporate all of it. But at the end of the day, when you think about math, I think about all the critical thinking. Mm -hmm. How are they using the critical thinking that comes from math to apply to their context? So here's an example that is K through five. What They're, grade do you teach? Third, third, and third. Third, 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 third. This, so this may pertain to you or not. Mm -hmm. So um, I heard of a school that was working with upper L and they were interrogating the bus boycott of Rosa Parks' generation. And so how they integrated math was they looked at um, a diagram, a chart of the bus, the seats, and they talked about how blacks were forced to sit in the back, and then they talked about the implications of blacks boycotting and the money that was <laughs> lost to the company mm -hmm. um, and the money that folks had to spend in a different way. Mm -hmm. That's an example of using social justice math to look at an inequity and to incorporate math principles. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or like um, the other one was um, Harriet Tubman um, and the mileage, um, but also talking about the social context of what was happening in that moment. So it was some simple math tied into some injustices. And so given those examples, what other injustices do you all see in the world? Um, and the point is to be able to help them tie into current events and to not subtract what's happening in the real world from math. Mm -hmm. um, the Kaepernick thing or the NCAA thing in terms of how much money our college is making off of college athletes, how much money is gained by kids leaving after one year of college, that is something that would draw in a lot of attention. Kids would get into that. You have to know the math standards. You have to ask the kids, what are the current events? 
Right. For like middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The examples that I've seen um, for K through five is, like I said, the Rosa Parks or the Harriet Tubman, or you know, um, not sharing food and using the math, the subtraction, addition, fr fractions, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that one handout that I gave you last week, I think that had some other examples that you could explore. Um, well, I think it just really speaks to. I mean, we we've been trying to get this theme in math for years mm -hmm. and to not teach it out of context, yes. teach it in context yes. so that there's something to visualize. Right. So even with Harriet Tubman saving, you know, like two slaves came to the house this day and mm -hmm. then another mm -hmm. one the next and mm -hmm. three more the next mm -hmm. gets at your add three mm -hmm. single digit numbers mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they can visualize it happening and happening mm -hmm. and happening and think about mm -hmm. how many all together. Mm -hmm. But why why teach it as just digits on a page mm -hmm. when it could be within a richer story? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, building on those skills, once you've had, again, those uh, vertical conversations on, now how do you just continue to build upon that? So at that level, it has to be Harriet Tubman, um, that story, because it's a little more simple, but how do you get it to be more complex? And some of it is, I truly believe there are third graders that are living lives that are ready to talk about um, more complex. Because of things they've been yeah. exposed to. Right? I just, just like you just know it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So another one is there are some kids that are very well aware. I would say third graders. So I can't get K through five first yet. The right. brownie and the pizza and the things <laughs> right. like that. Right. Or like yeah. when you go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. when you um, who has access to fresh fruit right. Right. and how much more do you pay mm -hmm. going to this store versus this store and the money that you had to travel to right. get there. Right. Stories like that yeah. are about justice and justice. Yeah. But I'm thinking also about second graders with the LeBron James. I'm sorry, it wasn't LeBron James. It was, I can't remember the name of the company, but they had a young black male and a young white male, and they were advertising clothes. And on the young black male shirt, it said something about monkey. And then the other kid, it said something about king. Do you remember? And LeBron James got involved. But there were a lot of young kids talking about that. The math in it to me then goes to... Um, the loss of profit based on that racial insensitivity and the justice issue is the insensitivity and how we label. And then it can go to kids' identity, mathematical identity, in terms of what messages have you received about who you're supposed to be based on skin color. Mm -hmm. So it's the integration of all of that. What pushback do you, might you have or might you get or what's circling your mind at this point? I think for elementary, the finding math in, this, in the injustice is a little bit more of a challenge mm -hmm. because it isn't about, yeah. you know, we don't do percents, we don't yeah. do probability. Yep. Um, so it takes some creativity. Sure. Yeah. It doesn't mean it can't be done, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's yeah. as obvious. Yeah, you know what it means to me to hear you say that? What it may mean is, and this is something that adults are struggling with, adults are struggling to have discourse when we disagree. And so what it makes me think about is K through five, perhaps the focus, if we know K through 12, we wanna to get to social justice math, and I don't think that has to be every day, by the way, but where there's intersection, mm -hmm. intentional intersection, mm -hmm. what it means to me is K through five, and, and continuously, but intensely K through one, how are we helping students empathize with one another yeah. and engage in dialogue? Yeah. I think that's the beauty of K-5 is because you're teaching all content. I don't think it's so much about social justice math. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more about incorporating social justice. In everything. Yeah. Because, right, yeah. in everything. And then I can't just separate it when out. you have yeah. a social that's justice. Okay, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's fine. Right, yeah. and when you have a social justice storybook that you can oh, read? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I was reading Maniac McGee last year to my fourth graders that mm -hmm. I'd had for two years and it, I found it interesting because they weren't having like a lot of mm -hmm. discussion about mm -hmm. the fact that this white boy was in the mm -hmm. black part of the neighborhood mm -hmm. and why that was a problem. Like mm -hmm. they just were not yeah. comprehending that at yeah. all. Yeah. No, I mean, it's and they they the, it, developmentally yeah, aware because, right. and maybe they haven't experienced. Well, I mean, we have 
multiculturals in our mm-hmm. district. I mean, we're like right behind you guys in yeah. the state. So mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know, is, mm-hmm. are they just so integrated that they just haven't really thought about it that way? I mean, I wonder yeah. that, you know? I don't know. But, you know, you know it, to them, it's just normal to be those, mixed all up in the same neighborhood. Any of those storybooks, you can look for mathematical right. questions. So yeah. that, I think that's more mm-hmm. of how to mm-hmm. to connect them. Mm-hmm. K-5 is mm-hmm. to think, mm-hmm. first of all, a social justice story. Mm-hmm. And then you can always connect mm-hmm. writing, connect math, mm-hmm. connect. Mm-hmm. Th- there's mm-hmm. ways you can connect yeah. the things yeah. to it. Yeah, I love what you're saying. Um, while we may not have concrete math examples of lessons mm-hmm. at, that, at the lower L, because it's so integrated, Mm -hmm. there's still the concept that you can be teaching and speaking to, as well as building capacity in terms of how Mm -hmm. we talk about it, how we treat people. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder... Or even how we disagree. Or how we disagree and still be respectful. When we do math talks, it's like, Mm -hmm. there is a way to speak, to say, I agree with this, I disagree with this, Mm -hmm. and I think the same as you, Exactly. having that discussion that way. Exactly. And being very explicit with, and remember this when you're disagreeing with someone, um, to be respectful Mm -hmm. and... um, learning how to communicate what your concern is or the difference mm-hmm. in perspective, um, but being able to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember this book, and I have to go back and look at it now through a DEI lens, but I remember Dr. Seuss's The Sneetches, and I remember young kids reading that book and getting the unfairness of the stars that had, mm-hmm. or the, the Sneetches mm-hmm. that had stars. Uh, on their belly without. I think that's another way of introducing Mm -hmm. injustice. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be about the money, um, or it could be about Mm -hmm. some simple math, because I'm thinking about how many times they went through the machine and things like that, but there are some ways, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Um, But I love the idea of what we're talking about. You have um, space to perhaps do more cross-curricular type Mm -hmm. things. I want to I want to go back to this article and move us on. And in my <clears throat> section, see what section did I have? I had the last one, I believe. Is that right? Is that the one that we haven't done yet? Mm-hmm. Elevating the professional learning of mathematic teachers and leaders with a dual focus on mathematics and social justice. And so. Um, I underlined, and I think it's the sec. It's actually the first full paragraph, and almost to the bottom, it talks about strong family and community relationships, mm-hmm. and that's the other piece. I think we're all trying to engage families, mm-hmm. but with social justice math, it talks a lot about how are we incorporating community folk and guardians and support systems, and not leaving them outside, but bringing them in. So the family connections. Um, the other thing that I had, I think I'm reading the wrong section. Um, was definitely acknowledging the prior knowledge that kids bring into the classroom. Uh, it talked about the deficit thinking that we've been talking about. And then in that last paragraph, it talked a lot about, um, again, how are we dismantling? some of the systemic issues or institutional structures that we see. So with that being said, what I wanted to do, I'm trying to check time, because what time do we finish? Three, three o'clock, I think. Three o'clock, three so o'clock. we have like a half hour. Yeah. What did you say, Ginger? You're disagreeing oh, that that's no, what it is? No, I was is. just agreeing. Okay. Three o'clock, I think, and we have to fill out some stuff too, don't we? Yeah, you have to fill out that one document. Um, <coughs> which is your implementation guide. Mm-hmm. And so let me pause for a second. I want to, that's not the one. I had the DEI graphic that we had up last time. What um, is DEI? Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay. I had, that's what I call this. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think when we were talking that clearly we can make connections to the concepts that we were grappling with and how they were the barriers in the situations and how we have to deconstruct the fence. Are you tracking with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to go here um, to this reflection. 
And what I really want to focus in on is the yellow, the question that is yellow. And it says, how might you create an opportunity for the educators whom you work with to think through this? And so how are folks in your schools or departments already thinking through social justice or diversity, equity, and inclusion? You mentioned that there's a group that your team is working with, mm -hmm. um, so you have that. Yep. Um, how are others, and you might want to add something to that, but how are others um, joining with folks in their district or department to think through issues of equity and social justice, if at all? Or how might you? Well, I'm planning to continue to just be a broken record about um, the dangers of ability grouping mm -hmm. and how it will um, grow social injustice. Mm -hmm. It's not going to help anything. Mm -hmm. um, they seem to receive that well, the last example that you gave. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, um, so might the issue be knowledge about these things? Like people are just right. doing what they're used to or what they've seen and right. not thinking it through? And, and it's convenient, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you can have like kids together, mm -hmm. it makes it mm -hmm. easier to give them what they need. Mm -hmm. And maybe just not, like you said, the knowledge, mm -hmm. not realizing mm -hmm. the harm it can do. Mm -hmm. well, and I think also that was kind of a trend for a while in education mm -hmm. to meet True. students where they were and then try to bring them along Right. versus saying, here's the goal we want them to be at and how do we bring them to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's calling it differentiation. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I mean, even that was taught in teacher training and in you know over the years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that people think that if they ability group, that makes it like you said easier to meet them where they are and bring them along. But mm -hmm. they're missing out on the good, convert, rich conversation that mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. other kids bring and the conversation that everybody brings to the whole picture when they're trying to do that. So, so some old practices are getting in our way mm -hmm. and we need a refresher. Mm -hmm. And so some of it is about being able to collect the data on what's happening that may be harmful to kids and then being able to put something mm -hmm. in front of them to activate their thinking that mm -hmm. causes reflection and then give them a different tool. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just knowing that exposure is, especially in mathematics, I think now is showing that they're getting a lot of growth just by giving exposure mm -hmm. to things. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know what you don't mm -hmm. know, how are you going to learn it? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Well, and this idea of having the math be within a context mm -hmm. that is um, their world, mm -hmm. not just either naked mathematics or an unfamiliar setting. Right. Um, that takes some thinking, and mm -hmm. that means that the lesson plan you do this year mm -hmm. might not work next year mm -hmm. because you don't have any soccer players mm -hmm. or you don't have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just depending yeah. on. Yeah. So you have to be flexible and ready for that. But I, I feel like things I can do now are continue that message about mm -hmm. the ability grouping and continue to coach teachers in helping them lesson plan in mm -hmm. ways that the math tasks that kids are working on mm -hmm. can be things that everyone can participate in <coughs> and can have some interest in mm -hmm. that aren't making them leave stuff at the door, mm -hmm. like you said. Mm -hmm. That's right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like those are actionable steps that you can take. I wonder what data your district has mm -hmm. that might assist you in having conversations like just first looking at data and seeing what bubbles up for other folks. And then that might guide additional conversations too. Um, and I think it is gray le level data, but I think it's that long-term data too, in terms of placement in that next level, or if we're talking K-5, mm -hmm. middle school, and then beyond. I wonder how that plays into it as well. Mm -hmm or even um, having articles that talk um, about how we have made some movement with girls in math 
in how we might extract what we've learned from that to work with special populations, other special populations. I wonder about those things. What's not lost on me is that this is heavy lifting, and um, what's not lost on me is that this is change. And so I think about where I've been the last three to eight years, whether it's CTE or project-based learning, which is both all about bringing your real world in, contextualize the learning through the lens of career or you know project-based learning. Um, that does take a lot of planning. And so what I would say as we continue to have these conversations too is it doesn't have to be all the time social justice. It's making the most, though, of those natural intersections. Mm -hmm. So when kids are talking about Kaepernick, everybody know that I'm talking about when I say Kaepernick? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Flint water crisis or more subtle things. How do you amplify that and get the buy-in to move forward? Or just surveying the kids. What do you care about? Mm -hmm. So I know you have to finish this. Um, So if everyone has an electronic device, um, where you want to go is the classroom.google.com. And I think everyone signed up last mm -hmm. time, so you, don't, you shouldn't have to go through all that. What you probably do need is the breakout session code, so I can get back to you. Anybody need this? Mm -mm. I think I'm in. You think you're in? Yeah. There's yeah. the yeah, code yeah. right there. I think that once you're in, you're in your oh. Yeah. oh, so you should right be good. Okay, bottom. thank you. Usually, that's what they said they did last year, so that's what yeah. I like to do. Yeah, they did it again. May I say three things, um, interrupt you for a second, just say three quick things, I think. Um, I think it's quick. The rest of the article, to me, is good. Um, so I would encourage you to read through the rest mm -hmm. of the article. It really mm -hmm. is good. Not now, but eventually. And if you come the next time, what I'd like to do is come up with some K-5 through actual social justice lessons. Um, see if we can like do one lower L and one upper L. And so uh, bring the resources that you would need to be able to get into that if you choose this session. I'd like to actually come up with a K, lower L, and an upper L mm -hmm. social justice lesson. But I want to prepare you for that if you choose to come. So, okay, back to your Wait, Google. Wasn't that only two? The article was one, article. standards. I was thinking standards of resources and then with the intention okay. of developing a lesson. Gotcha. Thank you for mm -hmm. holding me accountable. Mm -hmm. 